find the loads carried in each member of the truss. I'm going to start by drawing the free body diagram of the entire structure. And I don't really care what's happening in the inside, but I know that I have AY acting up at one corner, 3 meters in the middle to the 60 kilonewton load, 3 more meters over to the end, CY going up, CX, which I've defined arbitrarily as going to the left, 6 meters up to the 10 kilonewton load going to the right. I don't have to decide which way my internal, my forces for my pins go by any sign conventions. I can just pick them. Now I have CX is equal to 10 kilonewtons. AY plus CY equals 60. These are just your equations of equilibrium. And if I take the sum of the moments at C, I get AY times 6 minus 60 times 3 plus 10 times 6 is equal to 0. So I know that AY has to be equal to 20 kilonewtons. And CY is equal to 40. Now I want to know what's happening in each of my individual members. I'm going to start by looking at the joint at A because I know what's happening here. If I consider the joint, I've got my 20 kilonewton external load that I already solved for. And I only have two more unknowns. I have AB and AD. These are equivalent to, equal to, the internal loads in the members AB and AD. And I know that the slope of that line along the between points A and B has to be 6 over and 6 up. So this has to be a 45 degree angle. Now I can take the equations of equilibrium for my joint. Remember the principle, if the whole thing's in equilibrium, then every individual piece of it is in equilibrium. So I can look at the equations of equilibrium for just the joint itself. The sum of the forces in X and the sum of the forces in Y gives me two equations in only two unknowns. That's why I started with point A, because if I start with a point where I have more than two unknowns, I can't solve. But at this point, I can solve. And I have a negative number for AB. AD is positive 20 when you solve these two equations of equilibrium. When you get a negative number, that means your member is in compression. Now, I picked in my free body diagram, both of the arrows to be going out from the point. That means that I have assumed that the sign, S-I-G-N, of each of my members when I solve for them will match the sign of the internal forces in the members themselves. So I know that a positive number tells me that my member is in tension and a negative number tells me my member is in compression. Now I have two of my members I have to keep going. So I'll look at the joint at C because it's easy. All of my forces at C line up. Again, I'm going to have my internal, my member loads, which will match my signs of the internal loads if I draw them as coming out from the point for B, C, and C, D. And then I need to add the external loads at that point, which were 10 to the left and 40 up. Now I can write my equations for equilibrium for this, and I get C, D is equal to minus 10 kilonewtons, and BC is equal to minus 40. Both of these will be in compression. Both of those loads are in compression, both of the members of the truss. I have one more member I do not know yet, so I go to the joint at D. I have a 60 kilonewton external load, and AD, CD, and BD acting there. BD is the one I do not yet know. I know also that this has to go at a slope of 2 to 1. No, even though I know that member CD is in compression from this line, I'm still going to draw it as coming out from the point because my free body diagrams have to be equal and opposite. So if CD is coming out of point C in my free body diagram for point C, then CD has to be coming out from my point for my free body diagram at point B too. Some of the forces in X says AB equals BD, and the component of that will be 1 over the square root of 5 because a 1 over 2 triangle has a hypotenuse of the square root of 5 plus CD. 
sum of the forces in Y says 60 equals BD times 2 over the square root of 5. So BD is equal to 67.082 kilonewtons. Now, I only use the sum of the forces in Y. I can use the sum of the forces in X to check what I'm doing. AB I know is 20. BD I just solved for was 67.082 times 1 over the square root of 5. And CD I had solved for before was negative 10. And does that, in fact, work? It does. So now we have found all of our members, AB, AD, BD, BC, and CD. It's really up to you. You can answer the question by saying AB is minus 28.3 kilonewtons, or quite equivalently, you can say 28.3 kilonewtons in compression. Just make sure you don't say negative 28 in compression because then you've confused the issue again.